How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it is Wednesday on the show, and you know what that means. AW Dynamite, NXT 2.0, The Great American Bash, which somebody here on the chat already said, holy smokes, this NXT show. I thought it was fine. In fact, there was some good stuff on it. So we'll talk about that here today, everyone's favorite topic. And, of course, we've got a lot of news, a lot of stuff to get into here today. Updates on Santana, who it has been confirmed by Tony Khan, suffered a knee injury at uh, in Blood and Guts, although he did not specify exactly what it was, only that it was a knee injury, and he could be out a long time. I haven't got an update myself, but the night it happened, we were pretty much told it looked like might have been multiple uh, ligaments torn, which would be, of course, out nine months to a year or so. But we'll tell you about that here today. We've also got the update on at Paige. She is done with WWE. No longer will she be Paige. Saying goodbye to the company she had worked for since 2011. She wrote a note to WWE. We'll tell you about that today. Update on Shotzi Blackheart, who is no longer on Twitter. We have got the Money in the Bank Go Home Smackdown numbers. And the Rampage ratings, which uh, still not great ratings, but uh, a .16 would be the best number that they have done since April 22nd. It was third for the night on cable. So apparently a lot of people wanted to watch the Royal Rampage. And, of course, we have Dynamite tonight. We'll see what happens on the show. We've got a lineup including the John Moxley interim title defense against Brody King. And who knows what else will happen on the show. So a lot to get into today. Mike Sempervivi is going to join us, as always. You can text us, 425-780-7566. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Yes, Mike Sempervivi is here today. Hello, Mike. Hello, oh, Brian. Not the face. Not the face. Did you miss me? I had a great time with Filthy. Except I yeah, dropped I another, heard. Uh, another F-bomb on the air. Too good of I a can't, time with I Filthy. I can't have him on the show. I, I get into... See, every show I do, there's a different, uh, there's a different Va- vibe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, there's certainly a different vibe on Filthy Four Daily. It's called Filthy Four Daily. So you get that uh, vibe here on this show, and not good. No, the spirit is on this show, but we have to tamp that down a little bit for standards and practices. The spirit is not there on this show. Have you ever heard that show? My oh, I've heard it. God. For the first time since last Wednesday's blood and guts, Tony Khan acknowledged the injury Santana suffered in the match, confirming that it was a knee injury. But he would not say more. No other details as to the severity or his timetable for return, other than saying, quote, it could be a relatively long injury. I think that pretty mm. much tells you what you need to know. Talked to Santana after the match, said the company will stand by him and support him through his recovery, which, quote, is the right thing to do. So a couple of things here. You know, people always ask about, uh, you know, insurance for, for WWE and AEW wrestlers, and uh, they don't get your normal health insurance as independent contractors. But uh, they will pay for your surgeries. So AW, I'm sure, is going to be taking care of his surgery. The big question is, well, and I actually don't know for sure when his contract is due. Somebody said it was the fall, and I think it is the fall. And uh, the question is going to be, well, uh, will he be a free agent in the fall or will they add time to his contract, which is, of course, what they do in WWE. If you have three days left on your contract in WWE and uh, you tear your ACL, MCL, whatever, and you're going to be out nine months, they add the nine. They add that time to your contract. So then you have to sit through the entire nine months under contract. And then when you can return, then you have those last three days. So they, they add time when you're when you're out due to injury. So we don't know, actually, if they do that with AEW or not. So... I guess we'll we'll find out, but all the best to uh, Santana. Sucks, and uh, yet another injury plaguing AEW. What do you think about the fact that he made sure to point out 
quote, it was the right thing to do, you know, to stand by him. Now, the injury happened in an AEW ring, even if their contract was going to be expiring in the middle of this injury. It did happen in an AEW ring in a high-profile AEW match. So, it you know, WWE, if somebody were to get hurt in a ring like that, would cover their injury costs. So do you think there's a reason that they pointed this out? Is there some, you know, case where somebody has been screwed over injury-wise, or you think it's just that's how he phrased it because it's interesting that that was pointed out and pointed out in the story i don't know because usually usually they're not going to fire you in wwe if you're injured no although it may i think i seem to think that it might have happened a time or two when they were doing all of those cuts when they when they went on their rampage of cutting like 500 people a couple of years ago i seem to recall there were a couple people injured that got cut but i I could be wrong about that well it's possible that bloodletting was so much i mean there were people with covid at that time that definitely had gotten released so i mean it's possible they cut people and didn't know they were hurt because there were so many and there's so many that were unused but uh we've also got the departure of page soraya jade bevis is no longer page Posted a column to the Players' Tribune on Wednesday to say goodbye to the company she had been with since 2011. She said, The idea of being a WWE superstar, I'm still blown away by it, still humbled by it, makes it hard to say goodbye. She thanked those that she had worked for, AJ, the Bellas, Natty, Tennille Dashwood, and more. Noted her time in WWE began in an era not far removed from when the women's division consisted of brawn panties matches. She says, it always, I'll always feel such a kinship with the women of my era, we worked so hard to prove ourselves, to prove that we we couldn't just wrestle. We could wrestle really well. I'm trying to watch my language here on this show here today. She thanked uh, Paul Levesque, Stephanie, Dusty, Tom Pritchard, Norman Smiley, Joey Mercury, Steve Kern. And uh, as noted, she was retired. They, they retired her as a result of a neck injury. And uh, unlike... Others, including Edge, who was retired due to a neck injury. She was uh, never allowed to return, and now she has been released. She said she wants to thank everybody for the past 11 years. You've let me live out my dreams. More living to come. I will see you down the road. So we'll see where down the road ends up being and when. And no, I don't know, everybody. But, I mean, we do have dynamite tonight. (laughs) <laughs> I don't think it's impossible, but I don't know. So please don't write a story saying she's going to be a dynamite because I have no idea. But she is, she? she is free today. Dynamite is tonight. They do bring in a lot of people. So we'll see what happens. Don't report that Brian said that Paige is going to be at AEW tonight. Instead, report that he said, oh, my God, what is Soraya Jade Bevis doing in the impact zone Thursday night? That's what Brian well, said. She could end up report in impact that. as well. She could be anywhere. Don't report anything except hey, she's going to see us down the road. Big personality, you know, and it's so sad because that's, you know, that's what she wanted to be her whole life. Her family, obviously, in the wrestling business, she gets signed to WWE. I mean, at that time, and I could be wrong. I mean, she was like, God, what was that, 2012? I don't know if they were hiring people under the age of 21. You know, they, they were really away from that for quite some time. Certainly people that were... You know, 18, the fact that we're seeing such young people get signed right now is a complete switch in philosophy compared to what they had. But so young to to be forced to retire like that. But she does have a huge personality. And I'm sure that there's going to be a lot out there. And I'm sure she's going to be in demand for any public appearances that she may make. Also, have Shotzi assuring fans she is fine. She deactivated her Twitter account this week. She uh, posted a... Instagram story. I can't figure out any Instagram. What's a, a story? Yes. What is it? Isn't that the, 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 it's the gimmick on the top where they're... But anyway, she'd, she'd put this on her story. I... I'm very old. Yeah. I appreciate everyone checking on me, but I swear I'm fine. I've been going through the toughest year of my personal life. It's deeper than nasty comments. But also, Twitter has not helped with my already fragile mind state. Just trying to stay motivated and positive. I am focused on my goals and not what is on the internet. Her father passed away in January. Stepfather passed away in April of 2021. And uh, I think everyone should deactivate their Twitter. That's my uh, recommendation. Everyone deactivate your Twitter. 
were you told about this or did you actually go to her IG account? Because it's if on the I front page her, of the website. I would say, because if I were her, I'd probably block you by now. You're the whole reason she got rid of Twitter in the first no, place. No, I'm not. Right? Don't start that story, Mike. Don't start that. Come on. Don't be an idiot. Don't come back and be an idiot. You can be an idiot when you're off the air, but not on. <laughs> You want me to read her statement? still have a long way to go to, okay. to, hey, listen. You still have a long you way to start go this? to get a catch up to filthy. You want to start this? Fine. Okay? What did I it's say so about much. Shotzi? I said she botched pretty much every spot she tried in the match. Okay? That's what I said. Well, let's see what she wrote. Mm-hmm. I can take a joke and laugh at myself. One of the first things I said was, quote, I can't wait to see that spot on Botchamania. But, she said, comments like you should be fired which I never said, and other terrible things, which I never said, admittedly hit hard. She's not talking about me. I just said she botched spots. She, I didn't even say she was going to be on Botchamania. She said that. I certainly never said she should be fired. I never said she should quit. In fact, I even put her over as doing good ladder matches in NXT. Mm. Then everyone has to yell at me. This is not on me. Tom DM me and said you you, you thought you'd, she'd probably make a terrible Emmanuel in space. Oh, get out of here! So. First off, he's an idiot. Second off, he didn't do that. Third off, I hope he loses every match in the G one. Oh, even to Yano? Well, dude, he'd put over Yano in a heartbeat. That's he'll terrible. get in a fight over who wins that match. <laughs> He's going to end up in a shark cage or something like that, messing around with Shingo and Yano and everybody else, isn't he? At some point on that tour, Jealous. he's going to be in a shark cage fighting Toru Yano. Back in a moment, everybody. Observe Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. I hear you all like this NXT Great American Bash. Not a bad show overall. And I'm watching this NXT as I listen to a enormous tractor outside Mike's house. And I think to myself, you know, I don't mind this show. I don't mind it. Now, granted, I have to watch it. And the question is, would I watch it if I didn't have to? And the answer is, I don't know. I might. It opened up with a vignette, a party vignette in the pool, which was so preposterous. It was so absolutely ridiculous. It's one of the charms of this show. It's just so bad, the verbiage. All these dorks are talking about like stuff that happened on NXT, which this would never absolutely ever in a million years happen. You're about to be hit by lightning. And, uh, God, it was preposterous. You really are. Then we had Roxanne Perez and Cora Jade beating Toxic Attraction to win the NXT Women's Tag Team titles. And uh, it was a better match than I than I expected. It ended up being a pretty good match, and, uh, you know, they got lots of near falls there at the end, and then they tried to double-team Roxanne. Jade tackled, uh, I think it was uh, J.C. Jane out of the ring, and then Perez hit her Pop Rocks, which I don't know why it's called that, on uh, Dolan and pinned her, and they won the NXT Tag Team titles. And this led to an angle later in the show where uh, Roxanne says, man, and they kept mentioning, I won the tag titles with my best friend. Oh, my best friend and I are tag team champions. They're doomed, if you haven't figured it out already. But Roxanne says she wants to win the women's title next week, and so she will be cashing in on Mandy Rose on next week's show. No one can ever be happy in WWE for any length of time. This must be followed by sadness and pain. Tony D'Angelo admitting that he uh, he whacked old two dimes, and then say that. he showed a picture of Santos Escobar in the hospital, and Santos was not on the show, and it was a picture of him in the hospital. So I don't know if he was ruling the hospital or what happened, or if they just like why would you just the things I can't figure out if he's not in the hospital, why would you go to the trouble of putting the guy in the hospital for this picture? Just take a picture of him laid out on the sidewalk or something. But anyway, he's uh, not around, and I guess we'll have to find out what happened to him. Plus, all of Legato was right there early enough in the show saying, call him right now to make sure he's okay. 
And then nobody called him. Or well, we don't know no if they called him. stood by, I'm apparently. Sure they, I'm sure they called him, but they didn't care enough to tell us what that's, happened. That's true. You also you had that Tiffany Stratton, Wendy Chu match that all the cameramen had to get ready and be in position for later on, so I understand. Pretty deadly. <laughs> this excellent promo on Briggs and Jensen. They are fantastic. This is uh, pretty deadly. Then we had Trick Williams versus Wesley, and it was all right. Uh, Trick Williams got a water bottle. While the ref was distracted, he poured it all over his hands. And then he, like, throws a bottle on the ground, but then he remembers he's not supposed to do that, so he picks it back up, and he throws it to the announcers. So the announcers can say, this smells like rubbing alcohol. And he uh, rubs it in the eyes of Wesley and then hits him with a kick and pins him. So Trick Williams. And on his shorts it says, Trick Willie. He got the win here tonight. They did a monstrously ridiculous segment backstage with Tiffany Stratton and Wendy Chu. It's just like the bottom of the barrel. And uh, it leads to a brawl, and this led to the match, which was uh, Tiffany Stratton versus Wendy Chu. And uh, this match was, for what it was, it wasn't very long, but this Tiffany Stratton, she's getting real good real quick. And Wendy Chu, when she's not doing the stupid gimmick, which is a stupid gimmick, I want to make that clear. (laughs) When she's not doing the gimmick, she can also work. And uh, and they had a good match. And then Tiffany, the finish was just like, whatever. You know, they're doing this match. There wasn't even a bunch of near falls. It was just Tiffany took over, drop kick, hit her finish, pinned her. And that was the end of that. We had uh, Apollo Crews hand out of the ring. And uh, he wasn't, he wasn't uh, Batman or whatever in this one. He was just a guy who is happy to no longer be doing a stupid gimmick. Because his, his children hated that gimmick so much they stopped watching the show. But now, no. now they can uh, now they can watch it again. So anyway, uh, he's interrupted by Giovanni Vinci, and they're going to have a match to see who is the better wrestler and athlete on the show next week. And some other segments and such, and then Carmelo Hayes versus <laughs> Grayson Waller. We had some stuff and stuff. Yeah, we had some stuff and stuff. Braun Breaker's shoulders hurt, but it didn't matter anyway. So uh, Carmelo Hayes beat Grayson Waller to retain the NXT North American title. And uh, this was also this was a pretty good match. Uh, this Grayson Waller is going to end up on the main roster. I don't know if he'll make it, but he's going to be there. He's got a lot of personality. He could do some, some cool stuff. He's not a great worker yet, but he's fine. And Carmelo Hayes is really good, but he's small, so I don't know what in the world they're going to do with him when he gets called up. But he ended up uh, hitting the uh, guillotine leg drop after Waller got distracted by Wes Lee attacking Trick Willie outside as he tried to interfere, and that was that. So Zion Quinn, last time we saw Zion Quinn in the ring, he got beaten. But it's like it never happened. He's just out here acting like he's undefeated, and, you know, his new gimmick is, look at me, I'm tall and I'm good-looking, therefore I am the future of NXT and I will be a future champion. And, uh, I don't know, he's getting better at the gimmick. He's still not very good at it, but they're going to just shove him down everybody's throats, (laughs) even though he has a long, long way to go in the ring. Oh, man. Him and Duke Hudson should have a tall off because remember when they actually were promoting him in that same way right after the card gimmick or whatever he was, the the poker player, then it was like, well, look at me. I'm tall. Look at me. I'm handsome. Look at this body. Like, well, that's what Vince likes. So it's true. Uh, remind me to uh, address this guy here who wants to talk about our criticism and, and how things are different. now. I want to address this one. Uh, Andre Chase at Chase University. Bodie Hayward's very upset because because Thea Hale never sleeps. Why does she never sleep, you ask? Well, she watched Money in the Bank over and over and over again. Anyway, uh, she thinks they should go on a field trip, and so uh, Chase says, all right, we're going to England. And in fact, they are in England right now, filming footage for next week. So they're on a field trip. We had uh, the Creed Brothers versus Roderick Strong and Damon Kemp. I don't know about this one. Uh, there were moments where it was good, and there were moments when it was not good. And uh, the Creeds are going to kill somebody that has not changed, or themselves. Brutus needs to stop doing the Brutus bomb to the outside immediately, or he's not going to last another three months. And uh, Julius, I mean, dude, he's just dropping guys left and right. Damon Kemp looked like he almost broke his arm, falling on his elbow. But anyway, uh, they won clean, 
And so uh, Roderick Strong, very, very unhappy that him and Damon Kemp uh, got beaten in this title match by the Creeds. We had a vignette for a new character named Axiom, whose gimmick is he's good at math. So I'll tell you who it's not. It's not me. But it is a kid. It's a kid who is good at math. What kid? A kid. Which one? And then we have the uh, we have a segment with Mr. Stone, Von Wagner, Solo Sokoa. Presumably they're having a match soon. Next week, it's Manny Rose, Roxanne Perez for the NXT Women's title. Apollo Crews versus Giovanni Vinci. And then the main event was Braun Breaker and Cameron Grimes. And uh, it was good, but I expected way more. Uh, it was just... I think they're trying to get Braun Breaker to... to uh, have more matches called in the ring as opposed to like rehearsing stuff because there were there was a lot of spot calling in this match and they need to do that because when this guy goes up to the main roster he ain't going to spend every week practicing matches over and over again before he goes on television so you know for what it was it was good uh, Braun Breaker beat him clean I don't think anybody believed for two seconds that uh, uh, that uh, Cameron Grimes was going to win there was some cool stuff at the end. Uh, the One Man Spanish Fly, the uh, Super Frankensteiner by Braun Breaker. So anyway, Braun wins, and then he celebrates afterwards, and they had done a vignette for J.D. McDonough, who was going to be here, they said, next week. But uh, apparently he, he drove his car over the Atlantic, and then he got here, and he attacked Braun Breaker. So J.D. McDonough and Braun Breaker will be your next championship feud, it appears. Unless they just do a quick match on television. I want to say one thing real quick. Fell here goes, uh, so a lot of the criticism I saw at the start for NXT 2.0 was, quote, how are these NXT people going to get better working the way they do? And here we are. Several talents have improved a lot in the last two to three months. Well, yes, there has been improvement, but here's the issue. That Tiffany Stratton match, which was good, and she is much better than she was three months ago, they're still going in there and spending a week or two choreographing their match from start to finish, okay? So what they're going to do is they're going to teach everyone how to be great at choreographing a match for a week and then doing it on national television. That's fine for NXT 2.0. But the moment Tiffany Stratton gets called up to the main roster, they're going to announce a match for her the next week. And then the following Monday, it'll probably be changed. She's going to know at 1 o'clock in the afternoon what her match is, maybe. And then she's going to have to do that match at 8 o'clock. And it's going to be completely, totally different. This was the issue with the old NXT that everybody loved. The NXT 1.0 that everybody loved, everybody loved it, but nobody was being prepared for the main roster, meaning what Vince wants and what we loved watching were totally different. That's why everyone got called up and failed. Okay, so it's actually the same thing here. They're being taught to put together matches a certain way, and they're going to go up to the main roster, and it's totally different. So they need to learn how to work, not choreograph. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. You want to hear a story, everybody? Yeah. I'm going to try and make everyone understand how this NXT thing works. It doesn't work. Okay? So, like 1992, 1993, me and my buddy started a backyard wrestling group, which actually wasn't in our backyard. We ran shows in a gymnastics facility. It was called the YWF, okay? So we didn't know anything about anything, but we watched wrestling, and we, we taught ourselves how to take bumps because we had all the crash pads. We had everything. So everybody in the YWF could at least take bumps, okay? But we didn't know how to do a match, and so what we did was we just went in there and it wasn't a shoot, but like you just had to take whatever you could get. And depending on who you were in with, the match, anyway. So that's, that's all we knew how to do. So we just, you know, we might have an idea like, you know, the ending is going to be this or whatever. But, you know, we were just taking bumps and we were just winging it. Okay. So then I started uh, refereeing for this guy named Dave Debashi. And I, I wanted to wrestle, like be a real wrestler at that point. And so I started training with uh, Matt Farmer and Nikki Six, who, by the way, I saw in Vegas when we went to that uh, horrible restaurant 
Uh, he was there. I, I hadn't seen him in years and years and years. He showed up at the sweet party, and we went to dinner and everything like that. And Matt Farmer was there as well. It's not Motley Crue's Nikki Six, by no. the way. So, so then, you know, I had to learn how to wrestle in a ring. So they had to teach me how to run the ropes. And then they wanted to teach me how to call spots, which we'd never, I mean, we'd, we'd whisper to each other what to do in the YWF, but it wasn't really like, you know, calling a sequence of moves, like calling whatever. And so a basic spot would be you grab the headlock, guy pushing you into the ropes, shoots you off, tackle, drop down, hip toss, whatever, okay? So they're trying to explain this to me, and, you know, Matt's like, okay, you know, Tackle, drop down, hip toss, drop kick, get it again. And I was like, what? That's like five moves. And he was like, yeah. So I was like, I can't remember five moves. And he's like, well, you have to. I'm going to call the spot. you got to be able to do it. And so I, I just could not figure out tackle, drop down. And then, you know, you, you shove them off and then you go for the tackle, but you both take a bump because you heard tackle, but you couldn't figure out. What you, so you, you both fall down. Or then you're both supposed to duck, or one of you supposed to duck the lariat, but then you both duck, so it's like the bullfight or whatever. So I'm like, God, I cannot figure this out. And so I was like, Matt, how about, you know, put me in the headlock, and then as we hit for every move, you call it what the next move is going to be. So when you tackle me, then as you're tackling me, you go hip toss. So I'll no-. And he's like, no, you have to be able to remember all of this stuff. So it was just like, I was lost. And so if I would have gone in and done a match with Matt, it would have been an epic disaster okay but you know after practicing for a while then okay tackle drop down hip toss drop kick get it again got it okay and you run your spot or whatever so my point is you get better as you learn how to memorize a series of spots so yeah tiffany stratton and these they're all getting better they're getting better at memorizing a series of spots and everything like that okay but if you watch for example nikita lyons and lash legend They'll go in there and they'll rehearse an entire match. And me and Nikki Six used to do this all the time. He would watch a match and uh, he would write it down move for move. And then him and I would go to the school and we'd practice this match. And we'd practice move for move, the entire thing memorized. And then we'd go work a show and we'd do the whole match that we memorized. And they were fine. And the more we did it, the better they got. But we weren't really working in a traditional sense. So my point is, see Lash Legend and uh, Nikita Lyons, they they try to do their memorized match. And, bro, if anything goes wrong, the whole house of cards collapses. They're lost. That's a problem. So then eventually I, I started to work with Buddy, Buddy Wayne, and uh, and there was no memorizing. Nothing. He wouldn't tell me anything. I was so nervous. I didn't know what to do. And it was trial by fire. And once I started working a bunch of matches with Buddy where we didn't call anything. We went into the ring with nothing but a finish. And he called the entire match and I had to listen and follow. And if something went wrong, whatever, that's when I really figured out how to work. So that is what they need. And that's really what they're going to need on the main roster. You are going to have, as was uh, noted in WWE's own press release, eight hours to practice to rehearse your match. Remember when they said about Sasha? They rehearsed for eight hours and then decided to walk out or whatever they said. You will have eight hours to rehearse, but you ain't going to have a week. And you ain't going to be able to go in there every day with your friend and go over your match over and over and over again and get ready for NXT 2.0 or the Great American Bash. And that's what a lot of them are doing. So, yeah, when they go on the coconut loop, hopefully they, they will start to do more of this, okay, you know, here's what's happening, and you got to do something different, and you got three hours to practice and then go out there and do it. You can get better at all sorts of things in wrestling. You can get better at at uh, at working, you know, getting in there with nothing and working. You can get better at rehearsing matches. You can get better at, at uh, calling a series of spots in the ring, and you have to practice all of it. But to be ready for the main roster, you have to be ready to do what they do on the main roster. And the person had said, well, it's not on the talents on Vince changing his mind. No, it is on the talent because you can take it to the bank that Vince is going to change his mind. That's just the way things work. You need to go in there and be ready to to perform with the idea that your match is going to be changed five minutes before you go on the air. Or you're going to go to the ring and you're going to be told, wait, well, you know, you were given eight minutes. You've got two. Okay? You need to be ready for that. If you're going to be a star on the main roster, that's where they have to learn. There are a lot of really good athletes down there. 
uh, especially in their own chosen sports like Lash Legend. Um, there's a lot of big personalities. One thing you can't teach is a personality, and they have a lot of that down there. Right now, you know, if I had a short list of, like, three acts, women, uh, female acts on the NXT roster that I think are showing the most right now to me, Tiffany Stratton is one of them for sure. Roxy, who we've talked about. And right now, the way it feels, JC and Gigi seem like they would be perfect for the main roster. I don't know about Mandy. One of the things with Roxy winning the uh, tag titles is, boy, I would have rather have seen them lost that match. And then she goes ahead and defeats Mandy Rose because... I, I, you know, maybe I'm missing it. Maybe she sells a lot of merchandise. Maybe she's a lot more popular in Winter Park, and I don't want anybody to lose her job. But we have gone with this Mandy Rose experiment with that title for a long, long time now. And is she any better than she was? Is she more of a, a threat to be dangerous on the main roster if she got called back up? I don't think she is. And Nikita Lyons is deceptive. I mean, it's, it always, I almost fall over when she's 22 years old, you know, she's so young. She's got a long way to go. She was out of wow. She obviously, you know, there was some wrestling training, but there was not enough. And hopefully that comes around because she and Lash legend, again, if you want to look at them with puppies with big paws, but their insistence on basketball players, and it's not just WWE, it's all of wrestling. There have been a few that have been a success over time. Mark Jindrak being one of the better examples of what he was able to do in Mexico. But I, I, I just, their insistence to get basketball players and try to teach them wrestling when that has been the one sport that probably has given the sport of professional wrestling the least amount of talent to work with. It's crazy to see Omos in there just because he's seven foot, whatever he is. It's terrible. It's awful to watch. And I don't know. Well, hopefully Lash Legend comes along, along a lot better. There's Fallon Henley, I think, is has got potential there too. But as far as three, Stratton, Perez, and I think JC and Gigi without Mandy. All right, uh, if you want to text us, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. A couple of other quick news notes here. The uh, SmackDown number this week was uh, down. Uh, it did uh, 2.142 million viewers, down 4%. Still the uh, second straight week of audience decline, but it was uh, led the major networks in 18 to 49. Finished second in all of television with a point four nine. All things considered, a good number, especially because it was uh, the July 4th weekend. And uh, Rampage also did well, despite it being the July 4th weekend. 486,000 viewers, up 15% from the previous week. 0. 0.16 in 18 to 49, and uh, up 33% from the previous week. So the people certainly liked their uh, their Royal Rampage, or the idea of the Royal Rampage. I haven't seen the quarters or anything like that. But uh, we'll find out about Raw's number today, actually. Shouldn't be any time. Do not expect it to be good. If it's good, it's actually great. Uh, expect it to be a, a poor number. Uh, because uh, Raw on the 4th of July, uh, I would not expect much. And we'll see what NXT and Dynamite do tonight. Dynamite coming off over a million last week for Blood and Guts. So, should be interesting. Right? It should be. Just like, look, take it back to the NXT thing for a minute, just as far as female talent goes down there, because make fun of a lot of the goofy, you know, Chase U and the, 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 the woman that's with Robert Stone. I can't even remember what her name is, but all of these women that they have on the roster right now, obviously a lot of them are very early in the game, but if you only had a couple people right as it stands right now, who do you think is most tailor-made for that roster? Obviously, there's Stratton seems like she's that person for sure. That can be one of them, but who do you think are two other acts that, okay, obviously they are you can talking screw only anybody women? Up. Yeah, just, just on the women's side of things. Well, Tiffany Stratton and... Uh... And uh, what's her name that hangs out with uh, uh, the Virgin and his buddy? Is that Fallon Henley or is that, that, that Tatum is, Paxley? That, that is Fallon Henley. I can't although, tell who is who on this well, show. Tatum Paxley's going to join Diamond Mind, apparently. Oh, is that, is that Tatum Paxley? Yes, that's why uh, Ivy Nile said, yeah, yeah, she threatened her, I guess. Who's the like, one that does all of the uh, overblown, like, uh, wacky arm gestures and facial expressions? Which one is that? 
Who is that, everybody? That's not the Alexandra York lady. Who? What? Who is that? Who's Kiana the, the James. Petition. That's Kiana James. Okay. Yeah. She's a is guilty she gonna hook up with a kid. She might, for all I know. Because he's the math guy, right? Katana Chance. Oh my lord. I actually think that Katana and Caden would be fine on the main roster. They'd be a good women's tag team. But I don't even know. It's like they've remember. Remember, it was like all this talk about a tournament for the women's tag team titles, and then there were no women. And then there are like no female tag teams, and they were struggling to come up with ideas. Now it's just been dropped. There are no more WWE women's tag team championships. Oh, speaking of tag teams, do you like how they made sure to point out on NXT out of nowhere that, did you hear, Brian? The Street Profits are having a lot of problems, and I'm not sure if they're going to be able to stay together as a team for too much longer. Yep. They actually did that. They did on SmackDown. Talk I know, but they did the on rumors. NXT, which is like, you know, it's just, it's, they are really dead set on pushing the, the pedal all the way down. I hope it's a swerve, but I do want to say this because obviously everybody's talking about Montez Ford. Dawkins a lot older. Obviously people are already tagging him the Genetti of that breakup, but he's a big dude. And I'd like to see him if they are going to break him up and they do decide to do something, give him an attitude Give him MVP and see what happens. Because I think, again, when you have so few stars and he knows how to be one and he knows how to talk and he's been out there for a long time and he's got good faith built up from the fan base, give him a shot. You know, I don't want to see him fall by the wayside once Montez gets to wherever he's going to get to because it's someday he's looking like he might be at the top of that company. I'm not even reading this text message here. Good. Good for you. People need to remember after Road Rager, pay-per-view go home. Forbidden door, blood and guts, and not hold tonight's dynamite to such a high standard. It'll be the start of the build for the next big shows. It cannot be judged against the last month of consistent supercards. So Did Tony send me that? Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simber, VB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. We have got dynamite coming up tonight. John Moxley versus Brody King for the interim AW title. Scorpio Sky versus Wardlow in a TNT title street fight where anything goes. Thunder Rose and Tony Storm versus Nyla Rose and Marina Shafir. Keith Lee and Swerve versus The Butcher and The Blade. And an appearance by Christian Cage and the Luchasaurus. That's the lineup for the show tonight. Unless more has been added. What does your shirt say? It's my shirt say? Yeah, what does that say? Disney Cruise. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got a problem with that? Not my thing, but all right, whatever. The Disney Cruise is not your thing? Not really, no. Wow. No. Well, clearly you didn't go. If you go somewhere, I wouldn't think it would be the happiest place on earth. Well, you know what it was? Oh, yeah? I had a wondrous time. I said my family. Uh Huh? And I didn't get COVID. I went right in the middle of Omicron. It erupted as we disembarked. Then we came back and it infected the entire world. But we were on a boat. What is up with you? What is your deal? God. We're out of time, everybody. I can't take anymore. We'll be back later on tonight with Dave. Wrestling Observer Radio. Only for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. I guess thanks, Mike. Thanks, Dom. Thanks, Filthy. Thanks for not cursing. Everybody at uh, <laughs> twitch.tv slash F4W video. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.